just want to welcome Jay Friedman to uh, our uh, segment, this next segment, Tuba yeah, People TV. Fun. Thanks for thanks for uh, allowing us to talk with you, Jay. Sure. No um, I was wondering that you this is you came to the Chicago Symphony in 1962. Yep, 62. And what was your prior to that? What was your first encounter with the the CSO? Well, I was a student here for four years, and I used to come to every concert that I could possibly sneak into or get a ticket to. So. I heard the orchestra for four years, uh, steady. How do you think Almost the so you you heard them in the in the fifties? Yeah. What uh, late fifties? How do you how do you describe how how did the the Chicago Symphony brass section sound or style uh, come about? What's the? Well, I think it was uh, I think it was Jacobs and Hersa. Uh, on each end, like a couple of bookends, and everybody else in the middle just kind of uh, went with the style that they had established, and it was pretty powerful. Were you? Did you listen to the recordings, or did you just listen to them live? Yeah, there weren't that many recordings. Uh, 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 there were a few uh, Reiner recordings, but it was mostly live. Yeah, I used to. I used to go every week. I, Sometimes I, uh, I'd hear a concert uh, more than once. Yeah. Yeah. So I went every week. I could get a ticket or, or, or a sneak in or, you know, get a comp ticket because I was in Civic at that time. What? what uh, can you describe what influence uh, uh, Mr. Jacobs may have had on your uh, career as a performer? Yeah, I never studied with him actually, but I knew a lot of people that did. And they used to tell me uh, things about his teaching, and uh, 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 some of it, uh, some of it, I kind of uh, figured out later was not really uh, what Jake was about, you know, because they'd always talk about the machines and you know, and the song and wind and everything, but but uh, I kind of figured. I kind of arrived uh, at the same things that he arrived at, but I had to find out for myself. Right. Yeah, I, I kind of ended up uh, with the things that he esp uh, espoused about the relaxation when you're playing, about about the breath, and uh, about. I had to come to that myself. I knew about it, and I knew what he talked about, and I knew what uh, uh, what people talked about. And I just came back from Europe. I did some brass concerts over there, and uh, everybody has a different idea uh, about the Jacobs thing, and uh, and he thinks that we're uh, we're all Jacobs uh, clones here, which is kind of misunderstood. Yeah, I mean, I played with Jake for 25 years, uh, but I never studied with him. But I knew uh, what people talked about in his lessons and things like that. So I mean, I was well aware of the style, uh, even though, like I say, uh, uh, it got uh, perverted a lot because uh, people would take the wrong things out of a lesson. Right. Can you describe what what it was like to play with Jake? Yeah. Well, it was it. Uh, the thing that I remember uh, was the style uh, and the sound that he got out of out of a huge uh, instrument, which was so alive and it was so vocal. Uh, uh, it was such a pure sound, and it was so clear. Uh, and that was something you could tune to, because tuba players that have big sounds that doesn't impress me at all. Everybody's got a big sound on tuba, but is it clear? Yeah. Oh. And Jake had one of the most resonant, clear sounds I've ever heard. So it was easy to tune with him. Uh, and of course, uh, it, uh, uh, Kleinhammer sat, uh, sat next to him, and he had an amazingly clear sound. So it was so easy to play uh, soft things with them because it, uh, it was such an alive sound. Uh, and that's what I would say about the Chicago Symphony Brass then, uh, and we try to keep 
uh, that style going now, although it's not the same. It was more electric in those days. Uh, maybe less subtle, but it was more electric. Uh, there's so much life in the sound. Uh, and that's what Jacobs and Herseth did, and especially Jacobs. I don't know who started that. Uh, they both kind of arrived on the scene at the same time, and they both both uh, played that style where the sound just just uh, absolutely jumps out of the horn. And I've been trying to teach that and uh, talk about it uh, wherever I go. Do you happen to remember your first uh, first concert? I oh yeah, I remember it was. Uh, it was with uh, Stokowski, uh, and we did the Glier Third Symphony, Ilya Moravitz, with uh, Stokowski, and I was playing. Uh, I was, was playing that, second trombone. Was that recorded? Was that was that one of those? No, that wasn't one of them. No, but it should have been. Yeah, Stokowski recorded. Uh, he made a few recordings with this Russian Easter Overture, yeah. that the Kachaturian Symphony with the fifteen trumpets. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was a riot. What about um, what about uh, you know you're talking about Jake's singing style? It's one of one of his, uh, uh, I guess his voice really was he used vibrato on the tuba. Absolutely. Um, and sometimes in, in in two D sections, not necessarily all the time, but some. Yeah, a lot of time. that's right. Yeah, yeah. he was. How did uh, you he was like those? a singer. Uh, most of the time, I liked it a lot, and also. Uh, there's this uh, there's this uh, pervasive theory that the Chicago Symphony Brass always played everything loud and long, mm -hmm. and that's yeah that's not the style uh, uh, at all. Uh, in fact, I don't ever remember Jake Jake uh, ever playing a passage that was like like a really tenuto. Uh, it was always a bell tone style. Yeah, uh, that that immediate. Yeah, where the sound jumps yeah. out of the horn and it's got a natural diminuendo on uh, on every note, and it would cut through an orchestra. Uh, and he didn't have to play that loud. And Herset did the same thing. I remember, uh, I remember in the old days, uh, the whole orchestra. Uh, the, uh, the whole orchestra would be uh, blowing their brains out, especially the brass section, and Hersa, uh, and I'm sure Jacobs, uh, they'd be sitting there playing exactly the right dynamic to be heard above everybody else. <laughs> so all they heard, all they... Yeah, they even though everybody was playing, yeah, playing as loud as they could, uh, those two guys were so efficient on their instrument that they didn't need to play that loud, and yet they were heard all the time. And that's yeah, that's that's the hardest thing to learn. I remember when just I was one. when I was in Civic, uh, um, going and just listening from the uh, the podium area, just during war you know when people are warming up, and and noticing that the seemed like the back the back row when you're at the podium area wasn't in the old before the renovation of the nineties was not as, as uh, present as it might have been up in the gallery. Right. Uh, do you, do you yeah, the gallery was the loudest place in the hall. I remember Herseth talking about this, and you know, people were trying to explain, well, how did the Chicago Symphony brass get so loud? And he, one of the things he attributed to was the fact that the, from the, the podium... The couldn't hear him. Yeah. Right. Has that been your experience as well? Yeah, I mean, I've conducted from the podium and it's a very uh, you know, it's a strange sensation the brass uh, uh, volume it's kind of diffuse uh, uh, it's not what we hear back there and it's not what you hear out in the hall and uh, Herson <laughs> used to tell these stories with the Reiner uh, and there'd be a review where the brass was just uh, way too loud, way too loud. Uh, so Reiner would uh, uh, would tell the brass section, I don't want to hear it, you're too loud, and this and that. And after about uh, three or four days of rehearsal, Reiner, Reiner would say, it sounds anemic, and then they'd be right back <laughs> up to the old <laughs> volume again. I see. And so... Uh, well, is that style that you're talking? Sorry, from behind the camera, Mike. Yeah, Mike Becker. <laughs> that style that you're talking about—the the immediacy of the sound. 
yeah. when it jumps out. Is that the style that you think is distinctive with Chicago? Oh, Bay absolutely. Brand? Yeah, I've never heard anybody else do that. In fact, I'm, uh, I just did some brass concerts over in Europe, and I talked to them about this, and a few people got really excited about it and said, that's the way we want to play, but, uh, but nobody can agree on style over there, just like everywhere else. But when they heard this uh, concept of of uh, notes jumping out of the horn uh, and being uh, 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 and being very live, uh, it really comes uh, down to making a ringing sound. Right. Yeah, not a dead sound, and it's all the way you start notes, uh, and it's all the way how relaxed you are in your body. You know this old. Uh, this old German thing where you got to play with a firm foundation. Down here, Jake, uh, Jake really kind of cleared the air on that one, and uh, and made people realize that it's uh, that it's a bunch of bunk. Mm -hmm. The more relaxed you are, uh, and the more work you can do from the chin up and the embouchure, yeah, speed of the air, yeah, mm -hmm. and fast air stream out of a relaxed body. And I don't think Jacobs was the, absolutely the first one because I think Schlossberg was about that, and and the Kleinhammer told me a, a, about a second trumpet player that used to be in uh, in the St. Louis Symphony uh, back in the '40s, and he used to talk about uh, the rib cage being bellows, uh, uh, just like Jake used to talk about. Mm -hmm. Also, so uh, that's been around. It's just that it hasn't. Uh, been disseminated that uh, uh, that well until Jacobs came and yeah. uh, 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 and like I say there was a lot of mistaken uh, things that were attributed to Jake but Jake is about uh, is about uh, uh, ring in the sound uh, life in the sound a uh, vocal quality. And that's really <laughs> right. uh, what it boils down to. So probably students confuse, they hear the, the presence of the brass section yeah. sound. They, they confuse that immediacy and that presence with being loud when it's really not loud. No, it's, it's just, just alive. A, a style that matches together. Right. When it, when the yeah, sound if everybody it. does that, it's amazing. It must have been, when you, when, when you got in the orchestra, you were quite young. Yeah. Uh, yeah did, 23. Did your low brass colleagues uh, make it easy for you? Were yeah, they, because I had studied with the principal before that, Bob Lambert, and I, uh, and I knew Mr. Kleinhammer. Uh, he's the one that uh, that arranged to get my trombone, which I'm still playing today. Believe it or not, is that right? Yeah, wow. he went up t to the music store with me and and uh, told me what to order and wow. yeah and everything. So yeah, I'm still playing that horn today. Well, thanks so much for spending these few minutes sure. uh, with, with uh, Mike and I, and Puddles. And um, uh, Puddles um, is always uh, very careful to remind me to be a, a good um, host. And uh, so we, he directed me to uh, bring to you a bag of genuine University of Oregon duck nuts. Cool. And they're uh, dark chocolate duck wow. nuts. Wow. So they're really special. Oh, thanks. Wow, this looks, yeah, this looks fantastic. Thank you. All right, I'll Th take this home. Thanks a lot. With me. Yeah. It's great to see you. Yeah, good to see you. All right. Thanks.